What's up, fishing friends? I got something in the mail. And I know what it is. It's from Lure Lock. And Lure Lock's having a special right now. If you buy their big four-in-one box, they give you a, another single box for free. So here's a single box they give you for free. Lure Lock's pretty cool. Made in the USA, which is kind of cool. So this is the free box. It's pretty much just an open box and then, I mean, an open, big open tray and then a narrow tray here that you can divide up. That's the free box. But this is the box that has intrigued me. It's this big, big four in one, as they say here, four in one. Okay, that's dividers. Let me just dump the dividers in here. Yeah, so this is the new 4-in-1 box. Now, I don't know if you know much about Lure Lock, but they have this uh, tacky stuff that they put in the bottom of every box. To hold your lures in place. It's called uh, Tack Logic. Holds tackle in place. Liner will not melt. No odor or residue. Dishwasher safe. Performs like new over and over. And it is kind of cool. It stays tacky over and over and over. And even if you get it dirty, no big deal. You can put it in the dishwasher. So I like that. But once I bought a couple of these boxes, I found that I didn't need it or use it as much as I thought I would. So let me show you what I mean here. What's the ideal perfect situation for this? Well, the first I thought was maybe terminal tackle. So I tried a terminal tackle box. Got one somewhere here, yeah. They, uh, to my knowledge, maybe they've started doing it, but to my knowledge, they have not made a specific terminal tackle box. And I think that is a mistake. And I'll check that and correct and make sure I'm not wrong there. But first and foremost, the number one use for this sticky stuff, I think, is terminal tackle. Because the worst part about a terminal tackle box is as soon as you do this or this, your hooks go over to the other sides, your beads and your swivels and any little tiny thing gets knocked around. But with the tacky stuff, it holds stuff way better. And so that's what I've used this box for, and it's worked pretty good. The only thing I did do is I got this trick from Fluke Master years ago. I take a, a liner that you can buy at like the cra a craft store, glue it in on the lid, and then when you close this, it really keeps your tackle from moving around in here. So that's the first practical reason I'd say for this tacky technology. But what else is it good for? Well, I'll show you one area where I think it's good for. Here's just a regular old waterproof box full of crankbaits, right? And, you know, I've got the dividers to keep them somewhat separated, but you put more than one crankbait in a box, and look, they all stick together like this. It's super annoying when you're trying to fish with them. Well, here's the beauty of this Tack Logic stuff. It holds your crankbaits. It keeps them in place and keeps them from moving around and keeps them from tangling. But here's the problem with this. Uh, these boxes I've found don't hold a lot. Um, and if you have a deep one, it doesn't work at all because... Uh, these that are touching the sticky stuff work fine, but if you got a deep one and you try to put this on top of another one, the deep one, the one on the against the tacky stick, but the one on top doesn't, and it kind of loses some of its uh, purpose. So, not to say I'm not pleased with these. I actually love these boxes, but I just think they could get more creative, and they've started doing it with this. The other thing that I, I don't know why they don't do is why don't they make some waterproof 
boxes. Waterproof lids. Um, they're missing waterproof lids as well, and I, and I ought to check that because maybe they're making them now. Like I said, I'm not totally on top of it. But this four-in-one box is interesting because it does several different things. So let me show you. It's got three trays in here. It's got one here, empty. And it's got another one that has these long dividers, but it doesn't have any crosshatch. And then it's got one big honking open box. So when they say four and one, it's actually probably even more than that. The first option would be just an empty box like this, okay? Big empty box that you could use for some stuff, I guess. The next option is this box I just showed you where you've got literally one, two, three trays all in one. That to me seems pretty cool and clever. And I'm gonna demonstrate why, how I think I could use that in a minute. So there's that option. Then there's another option. You take these dividers back out and <laughs> like so. And then they send you all these dividers. So let me show you the configurations that, that you can do with that, or at least some of them. I'm not, probably not gonna show you all of them. So you got these that have these little hooks. So you can hang spinner baits um, or other hooks along those. That's kind of nice. Um, one of the problems with these, I, I've, I've uh, had a friend and have tried his box, is that once you put these dividers in, they don't come out very easy. Uh, the box fits tight and then they stick into this sticky stuff. So if you're going to make a configuration with the dividers, you just got to realize it's not going to switch out real quick. It takes some elbow grease to make that happen. So let me put some dividers in and then show you. As you can see, they slide in pretty easy, like so. You can do a combination of configurations. You can take a skinny, a skinny side, put these in, like so. So you can see this configuration here gives you uh, 24 compartments and they're deep compartments. And so, uh, you know, they would probably be ideal for larger or medium sized crankbaits. Like this is a magnum size wiggle wart and it fits fine in there like so. Put another magnum wiggle wart in there so you can kind of See, see, those would fit and work just fine. So in theory, you could have 24, whoops. So in theory, you could have 24 crankbaits in here. You could probably put more than one, but I wouldn't suggest it. And uh, that would work fine. That being said, if you've got dividers like this for 24 separate crankbaits and each crankbait is in a, is in a compartment by itself, what do you need the sticky tack stuff for? I don't know. I don't think you really need it for the, for the, something like this. Now there may be other applications where you would use this deep stuff, deep box and the tacky stuff makes sense. That's one of the configurations. Now let me pull this all apart and show you the configuration with these bigger dividers. Okay, I got these dividers out, not easily, but there's a couple of slots here to put these in which makes you uh, move in and out. So I had, uh, for that 20, 24 configuration, I used the outer slot, middle slot, outer slot. Now for the configuration with the bigger ones, we'll just adjust it a little bit. So we'll do it like, like so. If you wanna, you know, the easiest way is just put one in and then you know where it's gonna go. It's gonna go in this slot right here. And instead of using three of these main dividers, you'll only need two. 
these actually do slide in well. Okay, so now that configuration is done. That gives you 18, 18 compartments instead of the 24. And you could do a lot of things with this. So if you go back to my Magnum wiggle warts, you know, you can easily put two in there. Probably put three in there if you wanted. And uh, you get a lot more, you could actually get a lot more crankbaits in this way with the, the bigger configuration than, than with the smaller compartments. So that's an option. Now, So you can, in addition to crankbaits and hard baits of that kind with treble hooks, uh, you definitely could put spinner baits in here. As you can see, that's what these grooves are for. Or hang a lure, lure on like a spinner bait, drop them in. You could get a lot, a lot of spinner baits in action in here if you wanted. like so. So the, the spinner baits definitely will fit and hang on this um, and these grooves. I probably, if I were gonna turn this into a massive spinner bait box, I wouldn't have the green dividers in though. I would just take them out. And uh, you could pack a ton of Spinner baits in it. It's a massive spinner bait box if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, that for me probably would be not be that appealing. Um, in fact, after playing with this, I don't think I would use this divider system. I think the way I'm going to try to use it is with these three separate trays. And let me show you what I've got in mind for that. So one area that I think I could, I could really use this box in, and it would be great, is to put all my square bills in this, make it a square bill box. Or you could make it a, a, a you know, a, a regular crankbait box, or you could make it a wiggle wart box. You could make it, uh, you know, if you just had one specific brand of lure, like wiggle warts that you wanted. You could make it a lipless crankbait box. You could make it um, all of your crankbaits. You could have... Uh, uh, some uh, a row of lipless crankbaits, you can have a row of square bills, you can have a row, a row of regular crankbaits. So there, there's a lot of different varieties. So let me show you what I was thinking and, and how it might look. I have a box here of silent square bills. And then I've got a box of knockers. And then I've got... Um, specific ones like the fat the fat CBs and then I've got uh, some others that are just smaller crankbaits square bills so I'm gonna fill this thing with my square bills for a minute and just see how that that works and I'm gonna go with my silent square bills first on the bottom because I use my silence less than I do my knockers all of my knockers and my noisy square bills I use more frequently. Okay, I've got the box done. And just take a look at these square bills. You can say what you want about other boxes compared to this box, this lure lock technology. But the reality is you cannot get this out of any other box. You just can't. I mean, I don't care what anybody tells you. Even the very best boxes don't do that for you. You know, they're, they're, they move around. They, they get tangled up. They, they just do. This may be the perfect system for crankbaits. Don't know for sure yet, but just take a look at that. You got one tray two trays. These are the knockers. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It really is.
three trays. These are the silence. Some of the silence. I mean, look at that. <clears throat> Full of crankbaits and they're organized. That is amazing. So here it is, the completed box. Check this out. 95, I have 95 square bill crankbaits in here. And of course, the amount that you can put in depends upon how you organize them and their size. But 95 square bills in one box. And they're all organized. They're all easy to get to. Top tray. The middle tray is a little, actually, this tray I think I'm going to put on the top. And then the third tray. Because then you can, if you put this in the, in the center, you can grab these edges and pull it out a lot easier. And then this one that has none in the top like that. Wow. This is a freaking cool, cool system. I, I was skeptical. I really was when I ordered this thing. But the, just the fact that you can put 95 lures in one box is just crazy. So that's it. Lure lock. I think for me, this is the configuration to go with. It's just really, really cool. If this box were waterproof, I think it might be perfect. Um... It makes me want to buy another one for my my DTs and my other kind of cold water crankbaits and another one for my deep, my deeper diving, kind of my mid-range crankbaits, and then one for my rattle traps. I actually, I, I'd like to see how the rattle traps work in this because I've got one of those Plano boxes. So I have this Plano Edge box that's supposed to be for jerk baits or rattle traps that's fit in here and it works pretty good but I really kind of question how much I'll use this it, it does keep the hooks from tangling so I like that but I still think rattle traps might work better in something like this but you know there's no end-all be-all perfect system yeah, I, I really believe that there's no such thing as one set of boxes like the Plano Edge or the Lure Lock or any of the others. Even even these these uh, Plano uh, waterproof boxes. Each one has great points, and each one has weaknesses in areas where it may not work. Like for example, I'd mentioned I don't think the Lure Lock is that great for terminal tackle because I haven't seen a terminal tackle box from them yet I mean I showed you this one that I've created but I think this Plano Edge tackle box terminal tackle box is way better and I think the only thing that would make this Plano Edge terminal tackle box better is having that gel in the bottom that would be even better but you know they don't have that proprietary technology so what I'd like is for Lure Lock to take the waterproof system that's in this box, put it in their gel system. I think that would be, be sweet. But I digress, I'm getting off the subject. The bottom line is, I tried this out, I bought this to try it out, and I am pretty well convinced I'm gonna love this. Um, I will you know, try it out on the water, take it out on the boat, and see if this holds up. But, uh, you know, one kind of devil's advocate thing might be you never need 95 square bills out on the water at any given time, and that's true. But, I, but a lot of times you don't know what's going to work until you get out there. Um, so it is kind of overkill. I, I, I will admit that for sure. But, you know, with this three-tier system, Maybe you have one level that has your square bills and one level that has your mid diving cranks and one level that has your DTs or, you know, whatever. 
you, you could really mix it up so that in theory, you could have every kind of crankbait you need in one box instead of just a bunch of square bills. What do you think of it? I'd really like to hear. If you thought this was informative and interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And to hit that bell, notification bell, to uh, be notified when uh, my next video comes out. I try to do videos multiple times a week. Uh, so with that, thanks for watching. This is Mr. Bass. Happy fishing!